Welcome to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness and cooperation with NAMI Wichita and Kaysun Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We are the largest grassroots advocacy network for people with mental illness and their family members. With over 800 national affiliates and 15 Kansas affiliates, with NAMI Wichita being one of those 15. We provide awareness, support, education, and advocacy for people affected by mental illness. Our purpose here is provide a community conversation on Case and Radio that provides insight into what it's like to live with mental illness. Our intention and hope is that our program will change attitudes, assumptions, and stereotypes about people with mental health conditions. My name is David Larson. I am very pleased and proud to be your host today, and I am a person with mental illness. I am in recovery for major depressive disorder. Like everyone, I struggle with the ups and downs of emotions and the changes of being fully human. But I am doing okay, and I know I have many gifts to offer my family, my friends, and my community. And it is my pleasure uh, to introduce our guest for today, and that is David. David, welcome. Thank you. So It's my pleasure. So, David, um, as, as our listeners will note, you have a unique sound to your voice um, when you talk. Uh, tell us where you are from. I'm originally from Kenya uh, in East Africa, and uh, Kenya was a British colony, so somehow the, Pri- the British left us this accent that is hard to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> Which is completely okay. Yeah. Yeah. It made me think he was from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what brings you here to Wichita? Well, uh, it's a long story, uh, but uh, my family has a long connection with Friends University. Uh, where I'm originally from, that is the western part of Kenya, um, uh, we had a uh, Friends missionaries who settled in the western part of Kenya, and um, the schools, hospitals, and whatnot were pretty much uh, built by the Friends uh, missionaries. We call them Quakers in Kenya. Yes. Yeah. So my family has had a long connection with Friends University. So I came to Wichita, you know, to go to school to Friends, but back then, you know, Friends the tuition was getting pretty high. So uh, I opted to go to Heston College, and then after I did my studies, I found a job in uh, in Newton, uh, that is Prairie View Hospital. And then from Prairie View Hospital, I found a job at a Breakthrough Club in Wichita, Kansas. So that's how I found myself in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. <laughs> and that's why you are here today, to talk to us about Breakthrough. Did you um, say that you founded Breakthrough? No, no. <laughs> oh, how long has Breakthrough been been around? Do you know? Uh, Breakthrough was incorporated in 1987, but before then they were just running as a, you know kind of a get together, a small organization. But uh, it's been incorporated incorporated since 1987. Wow, that's uh, excellent. Uh, David, how long has Breakthrough International been going? Is there there is a Breakthrough International? Yes, there is. Wow. Well, I mean, there's Clubhouse International. Uh, Clubhouse, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, that is uh, the organization that uh, develops, help develop clubhouses, and also they do accreditation for clubhouses. That Clubhouse International has been in business, uh, I'll say, almost uh, 50, 60 years. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, and you've been to New York City where it's the main office, haven't you? Yes, uh, their, their main office in, is in New York. Uh, that is where uh, their main office is, yes. Okay. And um, the Breakthrough Club here was was started about when? Uh, it, it started, it became incorporated in 1987, but it had been in corporate, I mean, it had been in operation, you know, before that. Okay. Yeah. And just... So, so you, you can say it was a de facto, you know, organization before it was incorporated. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so, and and again, for our listeners to, to share some information here, um, Breakthrough is a CRO, which stands for Consumer Run Organization. Is that correct? No, not It's necessarily. not. It is not. Oh, I had that wrong. Right. Sorry. Breakthrough Club is a pre vocational day program. And what it is, we serve folks who are diagnosed with mental illness. 
and uh, we provide four main services at Breakthrough. We help folks find jobs in the community. We find folks, uh, you know, advance on their education. We have a wellness program, and then we have an after-hour social program. Okay. All right. Well, um, uh, we're going to be taking a break here shortly, but I want to take a moment to offer a thank you to our production team, uh, David Peterson, uh, who's the executive producer, and Mike Padilla, rhymes with tortilla. That's right. That's right. All day, uh, every day. Our technical producer. Thank you, Mike. Um, did you know that there's a hurricane with your name now? Michael? Michael, yeah. I had heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fitting. Very fitting. No, no. It was named after me. It was named after my son. Ah, oh. okay. <laughs> and ap it's very apropos. Well, we are going to go ahead and take a break now, and we will be right back. Welcome back to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and KSUN Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Our Own Voice is intended to humanize the misunderstood, highly stigmatized topic of mental illness by showing that it's possible and common to live well with a mental health condition. And David, uh, before our break, you told us that you uh, are working at Breakthrough. Right, and um, we have had several guests here that have been from Breakthrough and have told us about their experience with Breakthrough. Um, what is Breakthrough? What can it uh, offer for the people with mental illness? Breakthrough is a unique program, and actually, its uniqueness stems from uh, the history of clubhouses. Just a little history about clubhouses. Uh, Breakthrough is the only clubhouse in Wichita, in, in Wichita, Kansas. And um, the idea of clubhouses started over 60 years ago. Uh, we, are, we are founded on the concept of clubhouses or mental health clubhouses. Uh, this idea came from New York. And what happened is uh, in New York, um, over 60 years ago, there were some folks who had been discharged from the state mental hospital and most of them were you know homeless they were living under bridge so they go together and started a support group and over time you know somebody gave them a house to meet as a support group they were coming there in new york to support each other and then later on they founded the idea of clubhouses so the clubhouse was a movement that came about with folks who have a mental illness. That idea spread in the U.S. and then it actually sp spread around the world. As we speak, you know, we have about 200 clubhouses in the U.S. and then uh, the rest of the and then we have over 150 clubhouses all over the world. The clubhouses all operate under same concept. A person who has a mental illness becomes a member. Once they become a member, then they develop ownership in the clubhouse community. They volunteer their time and effort to come and run their clubhouse. Now, they brought in the staff just to make sure that the place is open, make sure that um, the clubhouses are continuous. But other than that, the clubhouse is run by members. These are folks who have a mental illness. They make the decisions, and pretty much they are in charge. They have ownership. Now, remember, we're using the, the term members. They are not patients as compared to the traditional mental health agencies. These are folks who, who, who become members. They volunteer their time to come and run their clubhouse. So relationships are important. It's a safe place, environment, and uh, in this 
interaction between members and members, staff and members. We are always looking out for each other's strength. And we are constantly asking folks, you know, what they want to do outside the clubhouse. And that is where the idea of, you know, finding them jobs in the community. That's the idea of them helping them with education in the community, uh, social skills, and also wellness. So that is what uh, clubhouses are all about. Now, clubhouses function under a set of guidelines. We call them standards. These standards came about by the members, staff, and volunteers. They all agreed that, this, that these are the guidelines that all the clubhouses are going to be run by. Okay. So it's a very empowering, it's a very empowering community. So you actually go to the members of the, of the clubhouse the, uh, to ask them what programs are going to be presented, what, what ideas they have, what, um, what things they're wanting to learn? Well, we have these standards that kind of, uh, that are agreed upon by the members and staff and the volunteers from the worldwide clubhouse community. These standards state what, how a clubhouse has to be run. But uh, ownership is very important. Those, the members who are members of the clubhouse are supposed to make decisions how the clubhouse should be run. Okay. That is very key. In clubhouses, we have no hierarchy. Um, everyone's voice is heard. In fact, in, if you walk to a functional clubhouse, one of the tests is you're not supposed to tell the difference between a member, a staff, and a volunteer. Because why should you tell the difference? Okay. We all work all together right. in partnerships. All That's right. Interesting. So, so you're, you're all working together to bring about this environment that helps people, supports them in their mental health conditions. Exactly. It um, uh, gives them education. Jobs. Jobs. We okay. help them find jobs in the community. We have a wellness program. We have a garden, community garden, so the members come in there, they help with the garden, they help with making meals, they help with, uh, you know, just running the clubhouse. Okay, well, this is Our Own Voice on Quezon Community Radio, and we are talking with David, and we will be right back. If you would like to learn more about the National Alliance on Mental Illness and how you can get involved in mental health advocacy, please visit our website at nami.org. Welcome back to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and K-Sun Community, Kansas. K-Sun Community Radio, that's what I'm going to say. In Kansas. In (laughs) Kansas. NAMI is a national alliance on mental illness. I'm going to get this out right, okay? Um, Now, David, before our break, you were talking about the structure of clubhouses and, and the structure of breakthrough. And um, uh, during the break, Mike asked a really important question. And so I'm going to pose that back to you. And that is, what are the qualifications of becoming a member? To be a, me- to, to be a member of Breakthrough Club, you have to have a mental illness. And also we do a background check. So examples of mental illnesses that the folks we serve, folks with bipolar, folks with uh, schizophrenia, uh, folks with anxiety, um, the post-traumatic disorder. Um, um, the application process is pretty simple. Usually we encourage folks to come in for a tour or they can call us. We can mail an application for them. Once you come in for a tour, you fill an application. Uh, there's two parts of the application. The one you can fill it over at breakthrough when you are there for a tour or you can fill and send one in. And then we also have the second part of the application. We have to verify that you have a mental illness. That can be done by a psychiatrist, a therapist, 
or sometimes family doctors are able to give a diagnosis. So once we get the application form and the diagnosis form, we process the application within two, three days, and then we call you in. If you qualify, you come. We call you in for orientation. Once you go through orientation, then you'll have become a member. Um, um, I talked about background check. Uh, the clubhouse is a safe environment, and um, we do a background check. Now, the fact being that you have a felony doesn't mean that that precludes you from becoming a member, but we are more so looking at um, crimes against other people, like, you know, uh, assaults, you know, patry, you know, sexual offend, offend, sexual offend uh, crimes and whatnot. So once you become a member, then you're a member for life. That's the exactly. unique I've, thing about the clubhouse. That's what my son is. He's been back in the mid-90s. He became a member, and he's on and off came, but he's always a member. Right. Okay. Does it does it cost anything for the membership? No, it does not cost anything to be a member. The only requirement, you have a mental illness, you apply, we do background check, you become a member. Okay. So... Um, Roughly, it takes uh, uh, five days a five week. Five days a week. Something like that. Right. Okay. We, do, we do our orientation every Thursdays. So whenever we get in the application, uh, it takes about three days to process, and then we, we get you in for orientation. Okay. Right. All right. Well, and um, uh, how long have you been doing this? Oh, uh, I've been doing this for 18 years now. Time has gone pretty fast. 18 years. <laughs> 18 Were years. Were you always the director there? No. Um, uh, I've how, been long, a, how long have you been the director then? I've been a director of Breakthrough Club um, um, for the past four or five years. Okay. Uh, before that, I mean, I was assistant director. Uh -huh. And then I was also, I've done all kinds of uh, roles. And so you, you, what, you roles. started as the janitor and then you worked your way up? Is that right? <laughs> I started as an uh, employment coordinator. I'm, okay. gonna and, and I, I'm just saying that because I, I, you've been there 18 years. You must have done everything. I've that done you can everything. Do I've there. done the well, right. you, I have that, three, uh, that sort of works under the title of director. Director means <laughs> director that you does do everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. Just, exactly. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even on my job description, it says as needed. Yes. <laughs> other <laughs> other tasks as, as needed. needed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. That is correct. <laughs> oh boy. Um, now you you basically have a very very safe um, situation where people can come, feel safe, feel comfortable and get some additional help. Cuz this is not this is not a cure-all situation. This is just help for you to get through your your life and your day, right? It is an intentional community where folks come for support. They get, they got, they, they not only come to take, they right. come to give. To give also, right? right. And it's a safe environment. Um, most of our members, we have very long-term members, and we have newer members. Mm -hmm. So this relationship, there's a lot of relationship that go on at the clubhouse. Okay. Well. Um, I know that in in my experience of uh, what I've had for my for my mental depression, that I had to go through various tasks and everything, and when I was in the hospital, so um, it sounds like it's it's sort of a, a an outpatient type of situation. But as you said, they're not patients; they're members. They're members. Yeah. They're members. Yeah. Okay. Well, the way the clubhouse is set up, uh, we have work units. We have uh, we are broken up into work units. Okay, I'm going to have to stop you right there. Uh, we're going to take another break, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and Kaysen Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Now, David, before we took our break there, I sort of cut you off really fast. You were starting to talk about work units. Uh, Go ahead and... and, and Well, you were just gave how the the organization is set up. Is that what you were talking about? Yes, right. Uh, we are set up in work units. Uh, again, we have what they call the work order day. So the environment there is to embrace work. Um, so we are set up into two work uh, departments. We have the business unit, or which department, rather. In the business, uh, we take care of mostly clerical stuff, the clerical kind of uh, uh, tasks. Uh, we also do employment there. We do computer you know, classes there. Uh, we do um, data entry, you know, people learning how to enter data in the computer. And then in the wellness side, uh, we have the kitchen. Uh, we have a snack bar where uh, the member staff and people at breakthrough can buy food from the snack bar. So member, I mean, there we have the wellness unit. I mean, we have the fitness room. Uh, then we have the community garden. The whole idea is that when members come in, they have the opportunity to contribute in terms of helping out in uh, these areas. Okay. And that helps with their sense of worth. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And that's the whole idea about clubhouses. It's a, it's a, it's a, a place where people come to regain their self-worth. Right. And then also those skills that they learn will be translated in terms of finding a job in the community. And then okay. it helps with their obviously their self esteem. They're allowed to. They're, they're, it makes them a better uh, contributor to society exactly. because they can operate in society better. That right. is a very big thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, what are the hours of operation, and where is it located? Uh, we are open. We are open Monday through Friday, eight thirty a.m. to four thirty a.m. Uh, on um, p.m. A uh, p.m. I'm sorry, and then on Mondays. And Thursdays, uh, we, are, we we have social after our social program from 4.30 to 8 p.m. That is Monday and Thursdays. We are open on every last th- ma- Saturday of the month. And then we are open on all major holidays except uh, the New Year's. And that's what also makes us unique. I'm told we are the only social agency in town that that is open on holidays. Really? Where members can come and socialize, have a meal, play games, and whatnot. Because, I mean, if you know the nature of mental illness, it can be very isolating. The symptoms yes. can be very isolating. Mm-hmm. So we want the clubhouse is there for members to come and be with people to avoid isolation. Yes, I remember one of our guests talked about how um, the Breakthrough Club was his family. Exactly. And um, and he would celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas with his family. Mm-hmm. And that's what he meant with the Breakthrough Club. Exactly. There's All a right. tendency, I think, that uh, as we get older, we, we have a tendency to want to be a little more isolated. We don't have as many friends. We like to stay at home in our comfortable chair and, and do whatever. It's very, very beneficial for anyone to be in contact with other people. It's what yes. makes us people. Especially holidays. Oh, especially, especially holidays, holidays sure. Right. Yeah. And is, is speaking of, of, of elderly versus non-elderly, I, I sort of classify as elderly as far as I'm concerned. Um, is there an age limit? Uh, at Breakthrough Club, we saw folks who are 18 years and adult. 18 years on up. Right. Okay. Now, we have a young adult program, you know, between 18 and uh, 30. Uh, the young folks have the activities, they do their activities together, you know, like social activities. Uh, they meet on on Friday, you know, uh, evenings. They go bowling, you know, they go to watch movies and whatnot. Whereas the general, so after our social program, Generally, folks decide on what they do, and we do things like going to, um, you know, bowling. You know, we go to shopping. Uh, we go to thrift stores. Okay. Movies, we go to theaters, yeah. movies, and whatnot. Now, I, I'm going to have to cut you off here because I need to direct our attention now to David. 
uh, who is going to um, uh, share with us about um, uh, share with us about NAMI. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give the address to Breakthrough Club. It's 1010 North Main, and it's uh, affiliated with the Episcopal Social Services, ESS. And uh, uh, it's a great organization. I have volunteered there, and uh, uh, now I'm volunteering for NAMI and uh, taking telephone calls. It's 316-686-1373. 316-686-1373. Call that number, and I can give you the information of ongoing programs, support groups, and uh, what we have to offer on a continuous basis every month. And uh, I think you would find NAMI uh, something very helpful, to, especially to anyone that has, has a mental illness in their family. Thank you. And um, uh, I want to thank David for uh, talking with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.